Welcome back to my channel guys. It is the second video of the week. We are doing a chit chat get ready with me because tonight I'm going to Billie Eilish and I thought what better night than to do a get ready with me. I'm going to do my makeup a little bit extra and I'm going to yeah wash this hair do a little makeover if you will. Now I've been editing all day so my brain hurts but the first step of getting ready remove the glasses. We are going to jump in the shower and wash this hair. Let's go. Oh, I feel so much better after that. I have already put on deodorant and I have also put on body moisturizer. I'm just prepping my skin with that. The first product I will do for my skincare, because it's not like my nighttime bed routine, I'm doing my daytime routine. I'm just gonna do some HA serum. This is the one that I'm using at the moment. Guys, I have no idea what I'm wearing. I asked you to ask me some questions, which we'll get to in a second. And I said, oh, I'm going somewhere fun. And one of you's like, a date. <laughs> Guys, if I was going on a date, you would have known. <laughs> Trust me. But I am going to Billie Eilish. And the most exciting thing is the way that I'm going is so wild. I will tell you the story. And then doing some vitamin C. And I will then just do moisturizer after this. So usually for my daytime skincare, I like to do HA moisturizer SPF or HA vitamin C moisturizer SPF. I'm not too fancy, but always do your neck. Your face stops at your boobs. True story. I'm just trying not to flash you. All right, we'll let that sink in before I do the moisturizer. I've just done my moisturizer. I was gonna do SPF, but it's literally 4.30. I'm not even gonna be out in the daylight. I'm leaving at like 6.30, so I'm not doing SPF for tonight. Although if it was 8 a.m., I would definitely be doing it. Okay, now I'm going to quickly dry my hair because I want to do my makeup in the natural light and so I'll just dry my hair and then we'll come back and straighten that after we do the makeup together. And then I'll answer the questions. I don't know why I turned off the camera because I want to show you this. I need to buy some more but this is the heat protector that I use. 10 out of 10. That sounded a bit foul. My apologies but I'll just put that through the ends. I have short hair so I struggle not to get this where I shouldn't but anyway. Pop that through. I will brush it in a second. And then we'll go in with the Olaplex oil. And I just do like one or two drops. Again, through the ends. Not that my hair is damaged, but I feel like that just really gives it a nice shine. Alright, I'll dry it and I'll be right back. Am I sweaty? I'm sweaty after that. That was hot. I think we can just leave this for right now and get a start on the makeup. Geez, my hair dries so flat. Should I do my makeup in here? Maybe. Need my headband. One sec. Okay, I'm gonna do my makeup in here, I think, because it's just gonna make a little bit more sense. I can look there. Anyway, I'm just putting on the Bobbi Brown eye base, and then I'll also put on the face base. Some people can use this as a moisturizer. I like my moisturizer and then use this as like the primer. The story of how I'm going to Billie Eilish is a wild one. Last week, I get a message from a beautiful long-term follower of mine on Instagram. And she said, I know this is really random, but I have a spare Billie Eilish ticket for Thursday night, next Thursday night, and none of my friends want it because it is a solo ticket. She had ended up getting two tickets on the Saturday night for her and her other best friend. And she had offered this ticket to everyone, but nobody wanted it because it was a solo ticket. And she saw my YouTube video of me going to the movies by myself. <laughs> and she's like, I thought you might want it. And I said, oh my goodness. I was literally thinking today, because that same day I had seen other people at a Billy concert. I was like, wow, that looks like so much fun. I would love to go. And lo and behold, she sends me this message. And I said, look, I would love the ticket, but I'm not just going to take it off you. Like, I need to pay for it. And she said, no, you can't pay for it. I'm not taking anything. And I said, well, you at least have to give me your address or something because I can't just take it, like, energetically. When you take something, you have to give something, right? And so I can give in, like, any other way, but I wanted to give something back to her. And so she did send me her address and I sent her a little box of goodies. And I had put, like, the, the Daily Stoic in there. I had put a little headband in there, a face mask. I think I put one of the Dennis Gross wipes as well and I shipped it off yesterday with the giveaway prize because I just want to say thank you to her. Her name is Dee. She's probably watching this video so thank you Dee. It means a lot and I'm really excited. And I am going to now do my eyes first so we'll do the brows and then we can get into the questions. Do you know what? The lighting's actually quite good for a YouTube video guys, so I'm happy about this. I was a bit worried. <sighs> also, I'm sweating. Why is it so hot in here? Anyway, I did ask you guys to ask some questions, which we'll get to in a second. As for 
if it's going to be a date, no. But let me tell you, I have a crush. Crush update, alarm bells. <laughs> I have a crush, but I don't think he has a crush on me, guys. We've been chatting and I feel like we're pen pals now. I feel like I've been friend zoned or maybe he is like talking to somebody else, but I think I need to give up on the crush. <laughs> the crush that I'm telling you about is a literally a week old crush. So it hasn't really gone anywhere, but I don't know. I just feel like why hasn't he asked me out yet? And I get it, I get it. I could definitely ask him out. However, for a first date, I wouldn't be asked out. For a first date. For a second, a third, I have no issue initiating that, but I like to feel wanted. And so I need that. And then I also think I need a man that is not afraid to ask me out because if you guys would have seen, I have quite a strong personality. I blame the Aries in me. And so I just need someone that can ask me out, you know? And I don't know if he's scared or maybe he's married like the other one. I don't think he's married. Just quietly. I'm pretty sure he's single. No date, but if I was going on a date, I'm manifesting one with him. Now, as for the concert, I am not nervous to go by myself because the last time I went to a concert by myself was the Justin Bieber Purpose Tour, I believe. And I think it was in 2017 or maybe it was in 2016. And I was in the mosh, guys. <laughs> I was there by myself. I made friends in the mosh pit. I even have a photo and I'm pretty sure it's on my Instagram somewhere, but I have a photo from the mosh and it was, I got there early because I wanted to be right up against the gate and I made friends with these girls and I actually ended up having the best bloody night. And so I reckon tonight I'm going to make a friend. I'm in a seated area. I don't know where the seating is. I've got the ticket. She transferred it to my phone number. I did say I was going to do something different with my eyes, but I don't know. I'm like, is Billy the time? Maybe I'll just go darker. Maybe I just won't be so safe, you know? I always do a very neutral eyelid. Maybe I'll go a bit darker. I'm using the Tarte In Bloom palette. And look how red my face is. <sighs> All right, let's have a look at the questions. Hopefully we've got some fun ones. <laughs> you guys are funny. What's that bubble tea order? The bubble tea I had today is passion fruit green tea, 30% sugar, apple popping pearls and you know what guys i have been trying all of your suggestions and i will still keep trying them but so far i feel like that one has been my favorite one i mean i haven't had one bubble tea that i've disliked ever so <laughs> i feel like i'm on a pretty good roll yesterday though i tried that disgusting iced vanilla latte from maccas with the caramel sundae syrup because it was like this trend going around on tiktok and it was disgusting. I literally wanted to throw up. I think I stick to my char time recommendations. Someone commented that I should try a drink from Zarafa's, but apparently we don't have one in Melbourne. I don't know how true that is. Do you ever feel overwhelmed with the amount of people that follow you? How do you handle it? I don't feel overwhelmed when I look at the amount of people that follow me or the amount of views my videos get. I do sometimes feel overwhelmed in public places, which I think has kind of just been building because I'm at a point now where if I go out anywhere someone will recognize me and it's fine i love saying hello to you guys but that still is overwhelming and i i mentioned in my vlog last week like i was rushing around woolworths because i was really hungry and i just wanted to buy cereal and go home and eat and then i thought to myself fuck what if someone saw me and then thought she's so rude like she didn't even smile back at me or something like that so that has kind of been creeping in but i think that's just a natural part of you know being recognized in public i will say i love when you guys come up to me how do i deal with it I still go out. <laughs> I, I'm not going to not go out. I just think I have to adapt to it. It's just part of life now. I feel like going in with like a very dark color. Billy Eilish, we can go a bit of a smoky eye, right? This is like the darkest I've done my makeup, I reckon, in ages. I don't know how it's showing up on that camera, but it looks good in the mirror. Next question. How long have you had Franklin for? Our sausage dog, Poppy, is absolutely mischief. <laughs> I feel like I always answer this question. I've had Franklin since June 2018. So I've just had him for over four years and he'll be five in March next year. We have the same birthday in case you missed that. He was an absolute psycho as a puppy. So psychotic. And then he calmed down at about like one or two. They've got a lot of energy and you need to use their mental energy. Guys, I think we're doing good. Also, it's nice getting ready with you because I feel like I'm almost getting ready with like a best friend. You know when you go out with your besties and then you like have some pre's, you have got the music going, it's like the best part of the night. All right, we're gonna do the eyeliner. I think I need to do it off camera because I don't want to fuck it up. Hang on. Doing foundation and I'm just using my usual Too Faced Born This Way. You guys would have seen that I was like contemplating purchasing the NARS light reflecting foundation and I just believe that the NARS foundations are too yellow for me. And so for going out or special occasions, I'll wear this sometimes 
on just like an everyday one where I don't want to make too much effort, I will wear the CoverGirl foundation that I did that ad for because I actually really liked that one. And then I would like to try another foundation because this is very full. I don't mind how the NARS Light Reflecting sat, but it was just, I couldn't get the color right. And I just don't think for NARS, I need to be buying two colored foundations to match my skin. Whereas with CoverGirl, I do need two shades to match my skin, but that foundation is a lot cheaper. So it's worth it. Anyway, I do, however, love this brush. It is the Morphe, like, stippling foundation brush. I don't know, I bought it when I was in Sydney on that last week of work. I'm actually quite happy with how my eyeliner came out. I definitely think I fucked up this one. I nearly just poked my eye out. All right, let's answer another question. Someone said all-time favorite foundation, Keely. <laughs> I didn't know that you said that and I just answered that. Okay. Oh, this question's cute. How has your mental health been since leaving your nine to five? P.S. Love you. I love you too. My mental health is so much better. You'll hear about it in the vlog. But I did get a call from my old boss this week. He wanted me to go back and do some work for them on like a contracting basis. And I said no. When I left that job, I was really, really at my like wit's end. <laughs> I was pushed and spread so thin that I was then not even able to go to the gym and not able to balance everything else I was trying to balance. And had I not left that job to do content creation, to start my journaling, to pursue my podcast, to do my YouTube, I would have looked for another job. So my time there was done anyway, but I'm just gonna let that sit for a second because what that does is when you let the, the concealer slightly dry, that will be, the coverage will be thicker there. And then I just blend it with my finger. But yeah, my mental health has been so much better. I took one thing off my plate. If you guys watch the life update, I said that I had like a full plate of shit and everything was falling off and I just took the nine to five off and I literally have so much still to do that I can one sustain an income and two make it like I have a nine to five I've kept my routine if you guys have been following me you would see that I keep my routine I still go to the gym in the morning I still work from home the only thing that has changed is I've got a bit more free time on weeknights after work now which is so nice because before that I was filming in the morning filming after work editing after work editing on my lunch break filming on my lunch break planning after work and it was just a lot. It was too much. <laughs> I love this concealer by the way. I will have you know the Bobbi Brown Skin Full Cover Concealer. Huge, huge fan guys. Sometimes I might just do like a tiny dot like there because I've got a lot of darkness there but this has a bit of pink in it which is a bit color correcting for me but try a sample first. Don't just go buy it because I said so. I tried a sample of this first and I really really liked it and so I bought it. It's so hard not to do the and then what we do is just set the whole face and we will answer another question. Oh, Nikki, have the best time. Can't wait for the chit chat. Get ready with me on YouTube. Nikki, I see all your comments. Thank you. You're an angel. Oh, do you believe in ghosts? I'm going to say yes. I have had some pretty interesting experiences with that type of stuff. And I don't want to freak you guys out, but not that I've seen ghosts, but I've felt like people's energy and I... I've sometimes seen things before they've happened, which we'll save that for another time because I don't know if you guys are into that stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I do believe in it. I'm, I'm gonna say I'm not a religious person. I was raised and baptized Catholic. I went to Catholic private schools in primary school and high school. My family is not religious. The only time we go to church is for someone's wedding or a funeral. But I am gonna say I am spiritual and I think I do believe in something. Is it the universe? Is it spirits? I'm not sure, but yeah, I feel quite connected to that, if that makes sense. Don't know if I like how I did that. Oh, next question. Where is one place you really want to travel to? I am going to say New York, you guys, and I will get there. It was just a little bit hard at the moment because I quit my job. I'm renovating my house, which I don't have an update for you guys, but uh, hopefully I'll have one in the next vlog or the vlog after that. And I need to buy a car and obviously I've just quit a six figure stable nine to five job and I'm pursuing something a little bit more freelance, a little bit more, I don't know what you want to call it. Not unreliable, but a, it's just different. I just don't think it's smart for me to go and drop X amount of money on a holiday right now. I would love to go hopefully next year. I do feel like a holiday, maybe there's like a cheaper Australian holiday that I can go on or maybe I could do a Bali trip. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, New York is still number one. First period story. Considering I did get Tom, <laughs> time of the month this week why not so I got my period the, for the first time in was I in year five or year six I was in year five because my sister was in year four I think I remember it because it was my sister's holy communion 
fuck memory unlocked and I'm just doing highlighter by the way I got my period that morning and I thought I was dying I went to a Catholic school and so they did not teach you about sex education they did not teach you about the menstrual situation and so when I got it I literally thought I was dying <laughs> And I cried to my mum and then my mum bought me flowers or my nonna bought me flowers. People were excited. I was like, what the fuck? Why are people celebrating this? I'm bleeding. I'm dying. Anyway, <sighs> turns out it was normal. It was a period. <laughs> so yeah, that was my first time with it. I'm just adding some highlight to the brow bones. All right, I'm going to give this a spray because I want it to set. I'm going to just give myself a quick spray. Franklin, are you okay? we got time still, guys. We've got time. Hi. He's just running around putting some brow gel in there. I'm actually quite happy with how the makeup came out. And we're going to jump into another question. Have you ever seen your ex or exes in public? If so, how are you about it? Uh, I haven't. And if I have, I think I just smiled and carried on. What I would recommend if you're worried about that, have like a protocol in place, like a plan in place for if you do bump into them. For me, if I'm ever to see my ex, my plan is smile, jump on my phone, call my best friend. I wouldn't want to like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel better being prepared. I don't think anything bad would happen if I saw any of my exes. And I just need to do mascara. Whew. And then we need to pick an outfit. Sorry, I just threw that. I think it came out cute. And the eyeliner, you can't really tell once I put the mascara on. One more question before I do my hair. If you could only have one, what would it be? Poke, sushi, or cha time? Poke every, every day of the week, guys. All right, let's straighten this frizz. I'm also going to say something and I feel like I might jinx it, but if I do, at least it's on YouTube and we have proof. But I got this as a prep birthday present from a friend when I think I turned 21 and now I'm 29. I feel like it's going to die soon. <laughs> I just have a feeling. Anyway, I would love to know in the comments what hair straightener you use because back in the day, it was just GHD. There was no other real competitors to it, but I know that there's a lot of competitors now. I will say though, I do love GHD. I did do a collab with them and shop back in April and they sent me their travel hair straightener, which I do take with me if I do travel and I love it. And I do love this. This has been going for nearly 10 years. Well, eight years. Ooh, Adele asked a question. We share the same name. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. You have a cool name. What's the best thing about working for yourself? Honestly, it is doing something that fulfills me. I long held this belief that I did not want to be a business owner and that I would just rather work for somebody. And I think that had a lot to do with seeing my dad's previous businesses not go so well. And so it, it ingrained this like core belief that businesses would go bad. And I realized I was fulfilled by my nine to five up until a point. And then when I started making money doing things that I actually loved and things that I enjoyed, I was like, I would be so silly not to take this opportunity and not to dive in head first and give it a shot. And so I'm obviously forever grateful that I can do that. I say that all the time, but I'm gonna say that's the best thing. I actually feel fulfilled, I feel, fulfilled by it. If there comes a point where I'm not fulfilled and I don't enjoy it anymore, I'll find something else to fulfill me. That's the best thing about life. I'm always in control over what fulfills me and what doesn't. And then I've got another question, which I really like this one. How do I get my own style fashion wise? I never know what to wear. My advice to you is to firstly, find clothes that you feel comfortable in. I don't really care for what's in style or what isn't in style. If I feel good in something that already makes the outfit a million times better. You don't have to keep up with the latest trends. You don't have to wear what other people are wearing. You wear what you feel comfortable in because confidence pulls off any outfit. And I stand by that. As for styling, my advice is to pick like some core pieces for your wardrobe. You'll see I always wear the, those Glassons jeans. <laughs> I've got one black blazer, I've got one leather jacket, and I've got a whole heap of crops that I can interchange or a whole heap of jumpers that I can interchange. And I wear the same thing. You guys would see I outfit repeat. I have no fucking shame in outfit repeating. But my advice is to kind of build like a capsule staple wardrobe and have a Google about what that means and see if you can start to build one up for yourself. I did that with my work clothes as well. And I still have all my work clothes <laughs> in my wardrobe and I don't know what I'm gonna do with them because I do like them and I might need them in case I have a meeting or something to go to, you know? <laughs> also, how is it that I already need another fucking haircut? Annoying. Let's pick a fit and then I'll answer two more questions. I think my makeup came out good. Okay. I put together a fit and I don't hate it. I'm wearing a blazer from Glassons, this top from Glassons. I've got fake leather pants from Glassons, this black bag with my initials that doesn't exist, the store doesn't exist anymore. 
and then my Reeboks. I feel like I feel like I look cute. I feel good. And I want to answer a few more questions. So let's do that. How is the lighting here? I feel like it's all right or I can move to somewhere sunnier. Someone asked me what the biggest challenge has been since leaving my nine to five. And I feel like I want to answer that because I did answer the best thing about it. And the biggest challenge is by far adjusting to the consistency of pay because I was earning quite a decent wage quite consistently. And so, you know, I spoke about this in the Ask Me Anything. I did a brand deal in July that I haven't been paid for yet. And I know I'll get paid, but it just takes time. It's a lot longer to get paid doing this than what I did previously. And also I was a corporate girly for like eight years. It's a lot to adjust to not having that anymore, but I think working from home has made the blend into this kind of work a little bit easier. Uh, there was a question here that I really wanted to answer. <laughs> Oh, and this beautiful girl, Jordan, I always see your comments. I always see your messages. So thank you. She said, thank you for your podcast. They help me so much. <laughs> thank you guys for listening to my podcast. But I really do want to answer this question, which is, have you experienced any loss or change in followers now that you don't work a regular job? And I want to say no. The post that I announced that I had resigned is my most interacted with post ever. <laughs> and you guys have been beyond lovely to me. No one has really given me any grief. And I would say that if for whatever reason they did give me grief or if they didn't want to follow me anymore, then be my guest, unfollow me. I don't want you to feel like you have to stick around. If for whatever reason I'm not aligned with you anymore, you can always unfollow me. I'm not going to take it personally. And I also think subconsciously there was an element of me worrying about that because I thought a lot of people do find me relatable, that I do work full time, that I do you know, balance everything so well. But if you guys really saw me towards the end there, you would see how shit I was at balancing it and how much my mental health was deteriorating and how much of a terrible time I was having. And I even said it in my life update, like <laughs> if any of you had have come to me in an ask me anything saying, Adele, I've got a really high paying nine to five job, but then I've got this other opportunity where I can make decent money and I can do something that fulfills me. What would you do? I would give you the advice that I have done. So how could I then in my own life not make that decision? And I just think I'm living in alignment with my values. And if that bothers people, then they can always leave. I don't want it to be like, oh, you know, a bad thing. I feel like people change, people grow. I might change, I might grow, you might change, you might grow, we might not grow together and that's okay. Obviously I want you to stick around so please stick around but <laughs> if you don't want to be here that's okay as well. I'm going to answer one more question and then I think I'm going to order an Uber. Guys, I can't believe I'm going to Billy. <laughs> oh this question, not a question but will you do something exciting once you hit 200k? Because I am very close to 200k on TikTok and I think I will do something, I'm not sure yet but I definitely will do something to celebrate you guys because because it's a big milestone. For 100K, my parents got me 100K balloons and I also got gifted a smash cake. And so I wanna do something for you guys for 200K. Maybe I can bake us a cake or something. Anyway, I feel like I'm gonna go and head off now. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. If you liked it, please like, please subscribe, please leave a comment. I post two or three videos a week now because I do post my vodcast every week as well. I hope that you can join our little community and I hope that you have a great time while you're here. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you in the vlog, Mwah. bye.